identified myself at the beginning of these videos. Because who knows? Someone else might log in and look very similar, but not be me. I'm kidding. We were driving around Iowa, yeah, that John Yang doppelganger. We were driving around Iowa. I'm going to try and show you the, the view. I think that works. Look at that. And we are driving over to Iowa City to open a new office. <sighs> Yang Yang office. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a nice crowd there to celebrate the opening. It looks like we'll also have some news coverage. Good fun. We're, we spent last night in Des Moines. And what a freaking tremendous Yangapalooza preceded the, the giant dinner last night. Uh, so thank you to everyone who made the trip. And if you didn't make the trip and you wanted to, you're cool too. I understand. You know, I mean, uh, but the people who made it, wow. And then there was some adverse uh, weather and it didn't matter. And then freaking Weezer was rocking out. And there were other Yang Gang performers there too who were awesome. Uh, like Vicky Natal. And uh, he, goes, he goes by Chef Zoot. People mistook him for Zoo. Which, which I understand because that would make sense. Um, which he'd probably appreciate because Zoo is very successful. And, you know, uh, Chef Suits also very talented. So, Yangapalooza, thank you to everyone who came. Uh, I had a blast. I hope you had a blast. It got a ton of media play and coverage. Um, seeing Weezer perform, Saying It So is legitimately like, one of my favorite songs. So being able to come on stage while we was playing Sandy, so getting to give Rivers a hug, thank him for coming out. I mean, if you think about it, what that meant for those guys too, but for like the band, they were just like, yeah, sure, we'll like come to Iowa and play a show. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, like that's it's like real humanity at heart. So if you weren't a Rivers Cuomo and Weezer fan already, you really should be now because they're really good people. Uh, so coming on stage was a blast, leading a march of Yang Gang across the bridge was awesome, getting to meet people who'd come in from around the country. I did my best to take selfies with everyone who was there, and I think we did a good good job, you know, we got through it. Uh, and then going in, and then that, <laughs> I mean, you know what's funny, it's like there are like three perspectives on these things too. It's like, uh, for the Yang Gang over there, thank you, because you were so awesome and loud, and you filled the arena, honestly. It's like when you were spotting, the rest of the arena was like looking up, being like, holy cow, what is going on here? <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So there are at least three perspectives, I would say. Um, the perspective I had as the person who walked on stage and gave a speech backstage with, you know, the team and the ambulance there in the front row. So that's one perspective, and obviously, you know, it's a relatively distinct perspective. And then there was like being in the room and then there's all of the stuff afterwards. And certainly from my perspective, it felt great. It felt tremendous. I was just keeping my eye on the people on the tables because the people on the tables were at least theoretically up for grabs, I suppose. Uh, and getting a standing ovation from them was tremendous. Uh, so that was amazing. And then coming out of there with uh, people telling me what a home run it was, there was a journalist who said to the team off the record, like, hey, guy gave the best speech of the night, which was an awesome feedback. And then there's an after party with the Yang Gang, so thank you again. And, you know, people have driven like eight, ten hours, come from across the country. Some of them had been there, you know, at the not outdoors, 9 a.m., 30, 40 degrees, rain, snow. And then, you know, they're still there out at, like, midnight. Uh, so thanking them in, uh, was a lot of fun. And then now we're just making it happen in Iowa. We're going to open some offices and meet some voters uh, and the rest of it. But it certainly feels like we are playing very, very well uh, here in Iowa. And... On a personal level, I just want to say, like, seeing Beto drop out yesterday, I mean, there were people that had come in from across the country to support him, um, and then him dropping out, and it just makes me feel so grateful that we are growing when other campaigns are shrinking. 
you know, like Beto's cutting back, Kamala's cutting back, uh, a lot of people are cutting back, and we are one of the only growth stories in the field, and I've been around the block enough to know that when you're one of the only growth stories in the field, uh, that growth can take off in new and non-linear ways very quickly. We've already sown the field with tons of potential energy. There are a lot of people who now are considering me in this campaign in a different way. So if we keep gathering strength, there is no reason that we can't win this whole thing. And it's only because of you all. Uh, so thank you. And from the bottom of my heart, particularly for those of you who made the trip uh, that I saw yesterday. And if you didn't make the trip, not too late because we have to get tens of thousands of Iowans, tens of thousands of New Hampshire voters on board in the next, oh, almost exactly three months. We've got about 90 days to move the country in this direction and shake it up. So if you regret not being in Yangapalooza this weekend, if you look at it, there's a Yangapalooza every day for the last 90 days in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, and then uh, on to California, Texas, Colorado, and Super Tuesday states. It's a Yangapalooza all the time. Uh, but we do have teams canvassing in Iowa and New Hampshire. And if you convince a New Hampshire or Iowa voter, you can feel like you did something very significant that day because you did. Because it does not take that many Iowans or New Hampshire voters to move the entire course of history. Uh, it's a strange system we have. I could go through the math with you if you'd like, but <laughs> just a, this is to say there's a lot of weight <laughs> on a relatively small number of voters in Iowa and New Hampshire. Um, just to give you a sense of it, the record high turnout in Iowa would be 250,000 people in a state of 3.1 million. So that's about 8%. About 8% of Iowans are going to caucus. It's, uh, it, it rewards passion and activism. And I dare say that plays to our strengths. So if you activate someone to caucus for us in Iowa, that's a big deal. You know, it's like you get a number of people to caucus for you here. Like, that's all it takes. And then you can imagine those headlines. First week of February next year. That's the opportunity we have in front of us. And the opportunity becomes more real every single day. So thank you, Yang Gang. And if you haven't already seen it, you can check out some of the articles that are online right now about how the campaign's going, quote unquote, more mainstream, which means in large part, uh, because that thanks to you, we have more money to spend. And so people wanna <laughs> want to help us spend the money in maximally impactful ways. So we're gonna do some of the conventional stuff because you know some of that stuff works, and we're gonna keep doing the unconventional stuff too. So stay tuned. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye from Iowa. Uh, there's a team with me too. Look at that. There's Rob. Um, there's there's Caramel. <laughs> Caramel. And then in the front, <laughs> we've got Ty and Zach. Um, I'm not gonna have them turn around. But you know, it's not just it's not just me. That's for sure. It's a team effort. There are so many people um, making this happen every day, including all of you. So thank you all very much. See you very Thanks, soon. Thanks, Yang Gang. Thanks, Yang Gang. You're all the best.